Wednesday, I think, just got posted online. Uh, I haven't linked it yet. I just got the notice that it's up. Um, let's see. So, um, and, and uh, I heard that the, the, at least the Utah National Parks are supposed to be open in case you. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, this is a good one. Yeah. Um, so not Yellowstone, I guess. But. The Hmm? Oh yeah, um, um, yeah but Zion's is open, Bryce, um, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, and Bridges. Um, so, so, so all those are great. I, I like the Arches and Canyonlands. Oh, it's recording. Um, so, so if you're looking for something more off the beaten track, I like um, Goblin Valley State Park. So it's it's in that same region down there. And it's, it's smaller, but it's, it's really cool. Been down there. Yeah, that's yeah. It's impressive. It's, it, you go climb on the rocks. Yeah, you, you, there are all these little weird rock formations you can climb all over. They look like it, it, look, it looks like you're on Mars. It's awesome. Um, can I ask them? Yeah. So the video of the Wednesday lecture is already available or not? It's. I just got an email from YouTube saying that it's on YouTube. So I haven't linked it off the web page uh -huh. yet. But if you go to my YouTube channel, you should be able to find. it. So I'll try and link it some point when I get a chance to. But if you, you can go to one of the other lectures and then click on my name on under the YouTube video and you'll see all my videos. You should be able to find it. Um, yeah, so it, um, so I haven't seen it yet, so I, I don't know. You know ho hopefully it has sound. Um, yeah, um, okay, so I'll, I'll mention for those of you who are here, uh, there's the... Uh, there's supposed to be an intermediate project report due the like Wednesday after after break. Um, so the applies to three credit students. The, the, the only if you're doing a project. So um, so the the, um, the the point of the intermediate report is not just um, um, more work for you. It's so you can tell me what you've done so far, and you'll probably have a better idea of what you think you can accomplish or what you've done so far, what you're planning to do, and I can give you some feedback saying, here's what you should do to try and finish. Here's kind of, you know, if you're saying, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z, I'll say, well, do X, Y, and W instead. Z, you don't really need to do, but if you did W, you would really put it together um, to, to be completely abstract. Uh -huh. So, so, um, so, so, it, so, so it just needs to be short, so, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was just thinking about Crumpler. You are using uh, Crumpler for the project. Uh, uh, so, like, do they give free accounts to students? Uh, to to where? Crowdflower. Crowd. Uh, Flower. I um I don't know about that. So Is they crowdsourcing platforms. Okay, they might. I it's it's good it's good to usually ask. So you can you can you should try and find out. Um. So 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 also I'll say that you know at least um a few of those were here. The, the Wednesday deadline itself is not so important. Um, you, you should really give me some some feedback at, at some point or some update on what you're doing, so I can help you get to your final, a better final project. All right. So if you don't give it to me um, in, uh, the week after break um, on Wednesday. You want to wait, and then there's like a. Yeah. Uh, is there a mic? The oh, no, mic. I, I took the mic off because those causing some problems. So okay. Don't worry. It's recording. Okay. It's the sound should work by default. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so, the um, so uh, so so. Is it picking you up? I I'm I'm speaking loud enough, and um, and my voice carries pretty well, so it's fine. So I've I. It, it, it should be fine. I'll trust. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 if you don't want to give it to me the week right after break because you're lots of stuff over break, um, if you want to wait an extra, I guess, so probably be two weeks, that would probably be okay as long as you realize you'll have less time to incorporate whatever feedback I give you. I'll be flexible on that. So, um, but the final deadline will be actual hard deadline because you'll need to give a presentation on a certain day. So, um, good. Good to keep in mind. Um, okay. Uh, any, any other questions on that? All right. So um, today we'll talk about um, um, parallel. Uh, 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 we'll be talking about parallel algorithms again, and 
Um, the topic today is uh, a sorting, so a very, very basic algorithm. Um, so uh, the I, we aren't going to get, I'm not going to show you the optimal algorithm today. I'm going to show you uh, a simpler algorithm that will kind of illustrate some, some, some cool techniques and uh, and it'll be off by like the log factor, but you know, uh, it's, um, I, the, the point is not necessarily to show you all the details, but to give you a taste of these things. So, um, so, um, so just a reminder, you have this um, parallel RAM, um, which is your random access memory, and you have this set of these, these processors. Um, so, this, so this is P1, up to PP, and so you say that each processor can can access any piece of memory in a constant amount of time, um, and uh, it, just for simplicity, we'll assume um, a concurrent read and, and concurrent write, which means that there's no really domain over this. Each processor can read or write from any piece of memory at the, at the same time. We don't have to worry about locking or anything like that. Um, you can, in general, you can you can you can change these restrictions to exclusive read and exclusive write. It's usually more work, and sometimes it won't be in this case. And sorting, you, you can do exclusive read, exclusive work at the same time um, here. Um, but it's you just have to be a bit more careful in some places. Um, so, um, so so so, um, and we will in the model we'll look at there'll be two. Um, uh, so each of these operations, and also an operation on the processor takes a constant time, we'll be looking at two um, sort of resources. Um, the first one is the parallel time is equals to the um, number of um, time steps um, total. Um, so the, the, this is if you have the DAG of operations, it's the length of the DAG. So it's the total number of parallel steps you need to take. Um, you don't need to worry about um, if you're doing, you, you can assume you have essentially an infinite number of processors. We won't worry about how the number of processors affects so this. The, the other thing is the, is the work. And this is going to be the, um, the total, um, the total um, um, number of operations. Okay, so so it's uh, it's it's the it's the number of steps you need to take across all the processors. So look at the amount of um, steps you do in this processor and this processor, and you add them up, and that's going to be the work. Okay, so um, we had a discussion on on Wednesday about there's there's another thing you can look at, which is something that's called the cost, which is parallel time times the work. Um, and sometimes you want to make this as small as possible as well. Um, um, we're not going to worry too much about that. I'll, I'll, um, so, um, in this case here, um, so th th these are different models of how you um, are, um, are are looking at the data. Whether you can have some processors that take take more time and others do are turned off for a period of time and whether you need to charge for those. And this is kind of the trade-off you get there. And in general, the, the difference in cost for these sorts of uh, systems is usually some constant factor um, in it, if you're, if you're trying to load multiple things on a system or not. And so it's, I, um, I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's worth making an effort to optimize over that. Um, uh, so we're just going to look at these two effects just for simplicity, right? So in sequential, in a sequential algorithm with a single processor, the parallel time and the work have to be the same, right? Or the same item. They're just the runtime, right? The number of operations you do on a single processor, right? But here it could be that um, the parallel time hopefully is much less than the sequential runtime, and the work is hopefully the same as the sequential runtime. Okay, so so that's that's going to be our goal. Okay, so um, so if we talk about sorting, um, so if we if, if we're doing this um, sequentially, um, then 
it's going to take O of M log N, right? So M log N times the sort. So basically, we're going to want our our parallel work to be um, also um, to be M log N, um, and so what we're going to do um, today um, is um, today is going to be the work we're going to have O of um, n log n, which is going to be going to be optimal, and the, the parallel time we're just going to have as log squared n. Okay, so uh, um, so this parallel time is not optimal. Um, you can get this to be just log n, um, but we won't talk about that algorithm. It's a bit it uses different techniques than we're doing, and it. Um, I think it's a little bit more complicated. Um, okay. Um, so, um, so optimal as the p time equals O of uh, on this O of logging. Okay. All right. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna base this algorithm off of a uh, merge sort. Okay, so, 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 so if you remember how the merge sort works, is you have a bunch of elements which are which are unordered, and you're going to break them into into chunks, and we're going to sort these two together. You know, um, each each of these pairs, um, and then we're going to these sort of pairs. We can then merge these by scanning over both parts of the list. Okay, so the, the key component here, the, the breaking them up into pieces, and we're going to need to do this, we're going to have log n um, rounds of this, where we're merging them together. Each pass through here is going to take a linear time, and there are log n levels. The key step is going to be to get two of these um, sorted lists and merge them together into a single sorted list. So that's what we'll spend most of the time doing. Okay, so this, so this is just a preview. The, the, the extra log squared time is that the merge step we're going to need to take um, log, log n parallel time. And so then, um, so, so then you're going to have log n rounds and each is going to take log n time. So we're going to get extra, get log squared n extra. Okay, so, so that's a preview here. So let me um, define the problem a little bit more carefully now. Um, the input, and, and we're assuming that any caching, on-chip caching, the processors do is invisible to the operator. So we're it doesn't fundamentally affect what we need to do. Yeah. So the okay. So so the point of the PRM model is to try and abstract out some of these lower-level details, right? So we're we're just each processor can grab a constant amount of information and do an operation on it in a constant amount of time. And we have P processors. How long does it take to sort? Right. So we're ignoring all the other parts of the hardware. So um, th th there's th th this is a reasonable approximation of s some some systems, right? You can the, the caching and so forth is lower order effects. The, the real issue with this is that typically you don't have the shared memory across the processors, the me memory is distributed. And we'll, we'll try and look at different models starting in, uh, after we finish, the, uh, after this lecture or one more lecture on this, um, where you don't have the shared memory. And, and that's the major way that you want to change this model. But all the lower order effects of caching are, are not really gonna affect very much how you would design your model. Right, so um, so the input is going to be A, which is going to be this array, um, A1 up through AN. And we want our, our output um, to, to be um, B, um, B1 up to BN, where, where each AI maps to some BJ. Um, and, um, Bj is less than or equal. Let's just say less than Bj plus one. 
Yes. Okay, so this, this is the typical sort of work. So there's 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 a one to one, uh, one, to one right? So so this is the typical sorting uh, framework. Um, okay, and so so this is the sorting problem. The the key sub um, right. So um, the 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 Um, okay, so, so the, um, well, we're actually going to look at a key subproblem, um, uh, uh, which is called merging, where now the the input is is going to be a a one up to a n and and b um, b one up to um, b n, where um, where AI is less than AI plus one, and BJ is less than BJ plus one. So these lists are already sorted, and then the the output is going to be um, another array, C1 up to C2n, um, so so that each C um, L is equal to some AI or bj, um, and so this, you know, um, so, so, so each of these is represented somewhere, and it's sort, right? So, so this is the typical, um, so, so this is the key merge step. If you can do this, then you can kind of freely break up your, your data into these chunks, and for each chunk, um, you, can, you can sort them each one piece by itself is sorted, and you can merge them together and log in lines. Right. So what we're going to get here is going to be so. Okay. So first, um, sequentially, you can do this in O of n um, um, time. Right. Um, so so if if you were to say this sequential algorithm was actually um, actually a parallel algorithm would be the p time equals O of n and the uh, um, and, and the work is is also O of n, right? So, so we have n algorithm for this. So this is the simple algorithm which uh, makes is what you so you do this by scanning the two lists and and keeping a pointer to each, and you put the, the smallest one in C as you should go. Okay. Um, okay, so. All right, so, but th this problem is. is is not um, this is not a great way to do it, but this seems like it's something that's very sequential, right? How would you figure out where this element goes without knowing where it's where all the if it's greater than these previous ones before? Both are same, so parallel time and the sequential time. The Okay. Yeah, so, so, so this is a sequential algorithm, right? Okay. So it's the, the parallel time is O of n. It's not very good parallel time, okay. right? But it's, it's one way of doing it. This it's emerging. One obvious uh, parallelism opportunity just says if the, if the list has n things in it, just fire up n over two processors, each one just compares two elements, figures out which one's first, and then hands starts handing things up to somebody else who's going to do a merge. So you're saying doing something like the bubble sort, or or the all n? Well, it, it, uh, for, for the first round, yeah, it'll resemble a bubble sort. Yeah. Uh, because because we're, each processor is only sorting a list of like two. Yeah, so, so, so in the first round of the, 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 the first round, start yeah. merging. Yeah, so the, the hard part is, is not when the lists are small. Think of the, the hard one is the very last step where they're both of size n over 2. Then you need to do something more. 
uh, we are assuming here an infinite number of processors or only n? We'll, we'll assume, and I mean, so, so as, as I mentioned on, on Wednesday, you know, it's for designing algorithms, it's usually fine to assume an infinite number. Okay. And then if you don't have that many, then you have a huge number of parallel steps. Well, you, you actually just run those parallel steps one after another. You break them up into, if you have a whole bunch of steps, you, you break them up into chunks of size p if you have p processors. Yes. And you do one chunk of size p, and then you, after that one's done, you do the next chunk of size p. And so you can uh, kind of um, sequentialize it, but it's as parallelized as it can be using all processors. Yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll pretend we have an infinite number of processors at our disposal. And it's not hard to figure out how to allocate it to the, the processors. OK, so, um, so the, the, key, the key insight we're going to use to do this merging problem faster, we want this to be done in, in only O of n work, but in log n parallel time. And the key insight is going to be a problem called um, ranking. And the idea is that if, if I knew for if element, um, it, it, if I knew where element bj was ranked in, in, uh, in, 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 um, in list A, right? If, if I were to insert this in sorted order in list A, and it would be come after the ith element, so the j element here came after the i element, then in C, its rank would be i plus j. Because there'd be i things before it in A, and you knew because it rank was j, there are j things before it here, so it's, or j minus one, so its rank is now i plus j. Right, so we're gonna kind of try to solve this quickly, and this will allow us to combine these together. So we're first gonna compute this ranking, which I'll define in a second, and that'll allow us to in, um, in, in O of 1 parallel time to transfer A and B into C. Okay, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll define the, the ranking problem and uh, I'll show you how to do it and then we'll, we'll I'll, I'll go back and show explicitly how to do with, with the output from that, how to get from A and B to this output C in, in O of 1 time. Um, the, the, the ranking problem will take uh, log n. Okay, so um, okay. Um, ranking. So the input is is going to be the same. Um, the input is going to be a um, a one up to a n um, sorted, and 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 b uh, b one up through b n um, um, sorted. And now the um, the output is is going to be um, something called rank of a um, b, which is where um, or we'll we'll say r is, is going to be an array of size from r one up to r n, where um, R i is equal to the rank of a i in b. So this is the number of elements that come before a i in the list b. And we're also going to output rank b a, which is the opposite of that. So for each element b, the rank of it a. So we're going to compute these two, these two, these two arrays, each of size. Okay, and um, so our goal is is um, the goal is going to be O of log n um, p time and O of n um, work. So we're not going to be able to, oh, going to be able to beat O of n work because we're, we're creating two new arrays of size n, right? So we have to do O of n work, and we want to do only um, O of log n parallel time. Okay. Um, so it, it, is it clear what the ranking is? I can put up a, up a small example here. Um, 
let's say that, so this is can be a little um, confusing. So let's say that A is going to be uh, 1, 3, 6, 7, and B is going to be uh, 2, 4, 5, 8. Okay, so, so now um, rank A, B. So the rank of L, every element A in B, this is going to be um, 0. There are 0 things that come before 1. 1, or one, 1 element comes before 3. 6 will be 3, and 7 will be 3. We can also do rank B, A. So 2 is going to have a rank of 1. 4, a rank of 2. 5 is going to have a rank of also 2. And 8 will have a rank of 4. Okay? Uh, so this, this is clear? No, how 4 and 5 who got rank of 2? So how did 4 and 5 get a rank of 2? So, so the, the, in, in rank BA, this is saying, given this element, how many things are smaller than it in mm -hmm. list A? Okay. 1 and 3 are smaller. Oh, yeah. And they're the same for both 4 and 5. They have the same rank. Yeah. Same way that 6 and 7 have the same rank, they would both slot in here. And Okay, so, so so the first algorithm we're going to use, um, I, I claim that there's a very simple algorithm that is going to take O of log n um, parallel time. Does it matter that they need to be already sorted in the example? Yes, they should be sorted. Yeah, be sorted. The input, um, input they're sorted. We're assuming they're sorted on there. Um, of n log n. Okay. okay, so the first algorithm we're going to do is log n parallel time, O of n log n work. So, the, so, so this is this is too much work. Okay, so there's a surplus log n work. We'll we'll fix this later. But first, we need to think how to do this. Okay, so th there, there are only O of n different elements, right? right. So, and the only O of n things on the output. So that means for each of these things, we can do log n work, right? For each of the elements, we can do log n work, and we can actually spend log n time on each of the elements, right? So we can, we can do something in parallel for each of the elements and mm -hmm. spend log n time doing it. So, 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 so that's what this combination says. Is it like uh, inserting into binary tree? Yeah, right. So, so, um, so, this, so, so if you have a sorted list, it's implicitly a binary tree, right? You know how long it is, and you can use the structure of the list to, to search, right? You check the middle one, and then if it's smaller than the middle one, you go to the left. So you can find, given a list A, you can, for say an element four, you can find its rank by checking against the median and then do a binary search on this array. That takes log n time. You do that for each of the elements in B in log n time. That's n log n work and same from A into B. Right? And that's how you get these two elements. Right? So, um, so, so that's just um, for each um, AI. Um, Search for rank in B. You know, and, um, and if you're using the notation from last time, um, this is a parallel to right? Um, and then we do the um, um, the symmetric um, for all the elements. Right. So this is a very simple algorithm, but it's, it's too much work. Uh, we want to avoid doing this. Isn't this also a rather memory intensive algorithm? 
I realize that's not one of our primary metrics here, but if, if we have a very large set of data, we may not be able, we, we may be pushing our ramp. Well, so you, you only need to keep, so you think each processor has like a constant amount of, of, of things that can keep, keep a constant amount of memory, right? All each processor needs to do is keep in the current guess of the rank of the element, of each element it's dealing with, right? It starts, first guesses it's n over two. If it's smaller than that value, then it updates it to n over four. If it's greater than that value, it updates it to n over eight. So it needs to keep the rank in A and also the value of B. So that's a constant amount per processor. Now, the, the, the thing which is, like, you do have to be careful about this, is that this algorithm is, needs to have uh, um, concurrent reads, right? This, this, if you have exclusive reads, you're gonna have trouble doing this, um, at least doing this naively. Uh, because every processor is going to wanna to be reading the median element in the other list when it starts doing the binary search. It always looks at the median one and splits. And if you need to do these concurrently, um, so you, if you have an exclusivity over the reading, you're going to have trouble here. Um, While we are finding uh, all the ranks of all the elements of B in A, we can simultaneously uh, get the ranks of elements in A and B also. Um, that will yeah, give the so same complexity though. But yes, yeah, the same. So, so run this algorithm and then run uh, yes, this algorithm. Yes, yes. The um, complexity so is the same. The, the parallel time would be two log n instead yes. of log n. You could also do them all in parallel if you want to. You probably don't have that many processors. So you're probably going to do some stuff sequentially anyway. So, um, okay. All right, so, so how do we reduce this? So, so how, do, how do we reduce the work on this? Um, the trick we're going to do is we're essentially going to use, we're going to use this algorithm, and we're also going to use essentially um, algorithm two, um, which is going to take O of n time and Um, uh, let me come back. So, uh, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to uh, 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 we're going to use a trick that was discussed after I finished uh, uh, on the lecture um, on Wednesday. It kind of is a way of getting rid of this extra log in and, and, and work it. It's kind of a way of uh, chunking things to get rid of some, some log in parts. Um, so think of this as the list A. And you're also going to have um, a list B. And what you're going to do is to break them into, into pieces. I mean, so, so this piece goes from um, a one up to a uh, um, up to a log n. We'll call this a one. We're going to have another one, a two, that goes from um, here up to a times two log n. Right. So, uh, so, so, so this is another chunk. And we're going to go up to a n over um, a log n. So we're going to break up a into these n over log n chunks. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with same thing here with b. We're going to break it up into b one, b two, and up to b n over log. Um, and so let me just uh, actually, so, so now you have n over log in chunks each, 
chunk is um, is going to be log n sets. Okay, so so let me actually try and draw a picture where I looks like I have more chunks here instead. So, so why can't you submit a denominator in each subscript? So this is from a one to a log n. This is from a log n plus one to a two log n. It's from a two log n plus one to a three log n. And then it's, what is, it's, what is it's, in an a n over log n? Or am I so the, these are the chunks. So the, these are the elements in the first chunk. Mm -hmm. This is chunk one, chunk two, and if each chunk is of size log n, and there are n things, how many chunks are there? There are n over log n chunks. Oh, okay. Right. That's the, the, the size of, big of the a, chunk the is log n. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm getting my subscripts. Okay. So, um, so, so we're going to have all of these these chunks in A. We are also going to have all of these chunks in B. chunk of B it's, it's in. Right? So this um, first element of A here is going to be in this chunk of B. This element of A is also going to be in this chunk of B. Space. This is, you're going to find the sorted uh, order of which chunk it is. You're not going to find the exact location. You're just going to, you just need to find which chunk that, that element is in. Um, let's say this one may not be until this chunk. This one also in this chunk here, and then like this. And then you're going to do the same thing with B going back up to A. So what you know is these lines are not ever going to cross. Um, this one may be here. So I, you know, I'm j j just going to the chunk. Um, so I, so, so I'm not. Now you can, if you want, you can search and find the exact element. Um, let me put arrows on these so you see which one is going. So I'm just looking at the first. I'm just doing it for the first element of each of the chunks. So. So I'm just looking at the first one here. Okay. Um, so and, and just the first element here. And um, so okay. what, what kind of the arrows represent? The arrows are the which chunk this element is located in it. Oh, okay. It points to the spot in A where it would be if it was inserted into A in order. Yeah. So, so let me write this up. For each um, first element in each chunk, and this is what I'm going to do in parallel. Um, find of uh, um, find. So let's say each element of AI, um, respectively, um, of BJ, which chunk of B, um, respectively, A, it is. Okay. So I, I'm going to compute all these arrows. They're just pointing to the chunk. I know no, no arrows can cross, otherwise that wouldn't make sense for the sort of so, so, so how long does this, so what's the parallel time and the work of this? Order of one minute. The, so the, um, so the P time, for each of these I'm going to, I'm going to search, right? So the parallel time is going to be log n, 
right? Um, but now the work, I'm essentially using this argument here. The work used to be n log n, but now how many chunks do I have? I have n over log n chunks, so the total work is now only n, right? So it's going to be n over log n times log n equals O of n. So I've only spent O of n work so far, so I'm, I'm still good. So I haven't exceeded my work limit, and I'm still only using log n parallel time. Okay. I didn't uh, is it uh, the p time, is it log n or n by log n? Because uh, um, we are searching across the chunks, right? So, you know, you can do it with log, so if, if you, so, so okay, so, so O of, um, so, so it's actually only log n over log n, because this is how many okay. chunks you need to search along. Okay. Um, however, um, this is equal to O of yes. um, log n. Yes. Any polynomial factor of n inside of a log uh, disappears, right? So, 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 so these are the, the same. Okay. Okay, so, so now I've got each first element of the chunk. So I've, I've actually done, uh, 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 like, I, I've done the hard part, right? I've, I've, I've gotten, every so often I've got an element where I have a pretty good estimation of the rank, right? So, so, so now what I can do, um, so, so this is step one. So step two, um, I'm going to, um, um, for each chunk, let's say, AI, um, um, sequentially um, scan um, to uh, rank in EJ, where uh, AI is in Right, so, 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 so what is this, so what am I going to do for, um, for, uh, uh, so let's look at this chunk here, this, say this is, this is chunk AI, I know this element is in this chunk BJ, right, this, this chunk of B. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan, so I know, I, let's say this first, um, the, you know, I, I know the rank in B of this first element, and I know the first element of the rank here. So, so, so I want to find the rank in, in BJ. I know it's this, and I can keep, for each element, I can scan over these as I'm scanning this and update the rank. I can, this is essentially this uh, very simple sequential algorithm, the same algorithm as converging, essentially, but I'm just figuring out the rank, right? So for each chunk of A, I'm going to scan this, this chunk of B. Right now, the chunks are of size log n. Right, so, so so each of these, each scan of A in this thing of, of B, I can do this in in parallel. Um, so so this I can do a pair um, do on. Right, so each of these operations, I'm scanning two log n size things. So it's the parallel time is log n. Right, so, so the, the p time here is going to be log n, okay? And um, the work is, um, the work here is going to be, um, let's see, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm scanning over a total of O of n things. So I've, um, I've, uh, N, N over log N chunks. Each of them I spend um, log N time. So my work is also going to be all of N. So now this stuff is also um, parallel time log N, work also O of N. Now, so this is great, right? And, and as I've scanned over these, I found the, for this AI, I found the rank in BJ, you know, in B. Processor is in charge of one chunk of A, for example, right? 
Yeah, so so each, so yeah, so you, you think, so I'm going to do the same for each chunk of BJ. Okay, so, right, so each chunk of A is for one process. Okay, so I'm clear on step one how it's been done in parallel, but in step, step two, um, two, I mean, one processor might need to scan two or three chunk of B, right? Because not all the elements of one chunk of A will go to one chunk of B. I'm good, 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 right? right. So, so like yeah, so I, I only, I only told you I'm only allowed to scan one chunk BJ here, according to my algorithm so far. I'm not going to spill over into this next chunk. I'm, and once I get to the end of BJ, I just, um, I, at that point, I'm going to stop. Okay, um, which means that. So now for this for this chunk AI, actually, I know I'm going to be okay because this. AI plus one points to the same chunk. That means everything, so if this element is actually right here from AI plus one, I know all of these elements must have a rank less than the first element of chunk AI plus one. Right, so, so this one is actually fine. This one I completely, I, can, I finish all the ranking of chunk AI. The problem actually is going to be this chunk. Um, Call it AI minus one, right? It starts pointing over to here, and then it spills, it could spill over into this chunk, this chunk, and even this chunk, right? But I only told you I was only allowed to scan over this chunk to try and sort it. So I haven't finished doing all the ranking of this, this guy right here. But if, if I'm allowed to scan all these chunks, this is going to take longer, right? So, so then this, this may take, take too much work. Well, couldn't we just divide that chunk then? Yeah, but I'm going to need, for this single chunk, I may need to scan over a large number of these chunks. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking, could we fire off a, another processor and say, um, you first element of uh, A minus one points to somewhere in chunk one of B. Uh, so uh, you extra processor go look at chunk two of B and tell me where the end of that thing is. Um, while somebody else does the same thing with, ch with chunk B three and then we use those reverse maps. Yeah, so, you, so what we're actually gonna do is something so something kind of along those lines. So okay. I'm going to do um, pl um, plus um, plus symmetrically. So I do for every chunk BJ, I find the rank in the match in chunk AI, but only in that one chunk. And after I do this symmetrics version of step two, I'm only going to need O of N, O of one parallel time and O of N work more work. To so I'm, I'm going to have a step three here, which is going to be the parallel time now is going to be O of one, and the work is going to be O of n. And I'm going to be able to finish off all the rankings. And in order to do this, I need to use that I've partially ranked A, and I've partially ranked B up to, up to what I can. Let's see how I can do this. I, I, I think you're, you're on to the right idea somewhere in there, but um, if so, that so, so if you the problem is if you keep scanning with this chunk, right, and the processor is running and running and it doesn't realize until it got to here that it spent more than log n time, right? Right, so this one processor for this chunk may have run. You know, for a longer amount of time. You yeah, want it to be Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking we could break A up at each of the points where a chunk of B points into it. Good, good. So we know that if A runs across multiple chunks, then all the chunks that runs, AI runs across multiple chunks, all the chunks that runs across must point into AI. Right? So now we can use these chunks to rank the rest of the Right? 
Great. So, so, so what we can do is for each um, for each element from from bj that's ranked, we 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 go and we um, all of all of the elements before it are going to have the you know if we find a particular element you know here let's call this rank 23 and it, it it goes up into this particular element here this is its rank in AI then and this element 22 goes up here and everything in between is going to have a uh, is, is going to have a rank of 22 so so in 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 O of one time, we can go and uh, and update all the all the part of the ranking in, in these chunks of A that span multiple chunks of B that we missed. So there's this may look confusing. Maybe I'm doing okay in time. So let me go and figure out the actual pseudo. Um, so do you believe me that I can do this, or is this you're 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 still skeptical? There's a couple of lines of code. I don't have them in my notes. Let me. So um, so, um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll finish up the algorithm and then I'll, I'll come back and explain how to do this, this step. There's some confusing if then else statements you need to write up, but there's a constant number of things you need to check using using both of the partial ranks. So you know either one side or the other has completely ranked, and you can map it from one to the Okay, so, so 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 given that I've done this, so so now I can do this ranking operation in log n parallel time and a total of O of n work. So now given these, these output ranks um, and these sorted inputs A and B, I want to go back and solve um, the merging problem where I want to output the single to C, right, which is now size 2. Okay. So, so, so what I'm going to do is uh, for um, I equals one to n um, parallel of do. Um, so I'm going to set c of i plus the rank of a i in b. This is going to be equal to AI, right? So, so the rank, so I, so for each element AI, AI here, um, 
the height element in A. I know its rank is going to be I, which is the number of things um, before it in, in, in A, plus the rank of it in B, the number of things before it in B. Right? And so this I can do in parallel, and in O of 1, O of 1 parallel time, O of N work. And then I need to do this, this same thing um, um, also for um, um, backwards for B. Um, for I plus rank of B I A um, is going to be equal to B. So I can now take all the elements of A and slot them directly into where they need to go in C. And the same with all the elements of B, slot them in directly where they go in A using, you know, this array and, and the ranks of the Right, so the, this is now um, o of 1 um, p time and um, O of n. Um, and so this finishes the merging number. Yeah, uh, some ranks are equal, so like 3 and 3, 2 and 2. Like how, how does that happen? All right, so, so let's, well, let's go through this example. That sound good? Um, so we're going to output some array here, C. Okay, so now I've got the rank. So, so I'm going to have eight spots here. Okay, so, so, so this has, a, so I'm going to set the counter, uh, start the index of um, here from one, I guess. So this is rank of A. Th this is the value uh, one in A, and its rank is zero. So one plus its rank in B is going to be, so one plus zero is going to be one, and so this is going to be A1. This one, I know it's, it's the second thing in A. Its rank is one, so um, two plus one is, is going to be three. A3. Six is the third thing, plus the rank of three is going to be in the sixth slot. Four, five, six. So this is, oh, sorry, this is A2. This is A3. This is going to be the fourth value, third rank, so A4. So each one of those I could do completely in parallel. I didn't need to uh, wait for the other one to finish. And then I can do the same from the elements of, of, of B. So this is B1, B2, B3, and B4. Right, so this, for instance, just look at number 5. This is the third thing in B. Its rank was 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. All right. Um, OK, so. Um, um, so the key lesson from this, this, this lecture is that, you know, in, in order to solve some of these, these, these problems, you're going to actually come up with some solutions, some algorithms for them, which are not, uh, which are not optimal, right? So the, what we used here, we used several different algorithms. We used some form of the sequential algorithm here, right? The sequential algorithm had parallel time O of n, but we only ran it on a chunk of size log. Right. We also used this algorithm, which had an extra amount of work, right, n log n uh, work, but we only ran it on n over log n elements. So the extra work didn't matter because we, um, what we didn't use it on, on all the elements. So we, we kept the work at O of n um, while keeping the parallel time at, at, at log n. Now, the, the, the sorting still had this extra log squared n because I need to do the, the merge step. Um, um, and log n rounds. So uh, each round was O of n um, was going to be so, so so each round was O of n uh, work and their um, and their log n rounds. So I got n log n work, uh, work but I, I needed n log n work, right? Because there's a lower bound sequentially of n log n. So 
So, so, so have any of you seen the lower bound for sorting? Um, so, so basically you can show in the decision model there are, there are um, I think, um, there are, there are two, essentially two to the, um, two to the n log n, um, or as, uh, um, or as, I think there are n factorial different ways you can, uh, you can sort, um, you can have as the input. In order to distinguish all of them, you need to take at least the log number of those things. So the log of n factorial is, is n log n. And so the then that's how you get a lower one. The proof was that we basically build a tree with, with all the permutations. So each leaf in this tree would have one way of, one possible input of n elements. So yeah. when you get an input, you basically traverse the tree. And then yeah, you get yeah. one leaf, and this is exactly log n. Yeah, so, so going to the lower bound, you need to, you know, the same thing more than that, you need to define what you mean by the, there are different models of, of computation you need to use. And so in the, in, the, in the most, the, I guess this one model is the, um, is the comparison model where you can compare two elements and say which one is larger than the other. Um, you can beat n log n in some cases if, you're, if, if your size is bounded, you do something um, like a rate x sort. Um, but, but that's not, doesn't work under the comparison. Couldn't we improve this further instead of doing this um, sequential search to find things with find right bit chunks? Couldn't we make that a binary search? Um, see, the, the, the output of this, so this is going to need, so each chunk itself, mm -hmm. right, is going to need log n work. Right? And if you're doing log n work for each chunk, you're going to need to spend at least log n time, at least log n time for that chunk. So you're spending. Um, so, so, so if if you wanted to search for each element in AI, I mean they're log n elements. Each of them you need to spend log log n time to search for it in BJ. Um, that's going to be log n times log log n, which is going to take, um, it's going to be that much, it's going to be an extra log log n in the work, which would be slower actually. It's, it's better to do the sequential study. Does, it, oh, does that make sense? It's, it's hard to parse when I keep saying logs, I guess, right? Yeah. It's, um, I'm, I, so, I'm, I'm at the point where I can see why it might work, even though I haven't been able to parse all yeah, the so logs. So, <laughs> um, so let's go through this, right? So, it's, uh, so this size is log n, and you're matching it each element, and, and you know, and so th this is also a size log n. This is chunk um, bj, and this is ai. And, um, and so, so to start, you can say, maybe you know the location of, of this guy here. You already pre-processed that. So the first element here, you found the location. So, so what we're going to do is, we know that this element, the next element, must be after the location here. Um, so we can scan until we find where that is. Right? So if we scan to find this next location, the important thing to realize is that the third element here must come after this one. So we can start the scanning here. So that means we only need to scan over BJ once in order to do this. Okay, so so th so this took um, to finish scanning BJ took um, log n um, p time, and I assigned everything up to some some location here has been assigned when where this element was here. I've assigned all of all of this part here in, in, in log n parallel. Okay, so so um, the amount of work uh, was also um, log n work. Okay. So, so, so let's say instead that we use what I what I think that I interpret as your algorithm. Um, for each of these elements in parallel, now, for each of these elements, I'm going to look for 
uh, its location in bj. And I can do that, bj is of size log n, so searching in, in bj is going to be log of log n. It's log of this sentence. Yeah. So now searching for this one, I can do it in log log n parallel time, which is less, which is great. Um, but how much work is this going to be? The work, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have log n of these elements of A. Each one of them, I need to spend log log n work. So then, so, so this is the parallel time, but the work is going to be log n times log log n work. So this one had log n work here. So now, if you look at this step, so you say, okay, I've really, I've really dropped the parallel time by an exponential factor. Um, but if I look at the uh, and where I'm doing this, I'm doing this sequentially over all chunks. And there are n over log n chunks. So what this would be is the total work would then be um, is going to be n over log n times the work here, which is log n times log log n. Right, this, which is equal to now this is going to be n log log n. So my work is now increased by a log log n. So uh, maybe you don't care about log log n factors and you're happy doing this, but it's actually easier to do the parallel scheme. So, that, so that's why doing using the same algorithm one inside of each chunk would um, it, it, is actually going to give um, more work. On the bright side, because I parallelized this further, the parallel time here is actually log log n. So I improved the parallel time. Right? I exponentially improved it. You know, exponentially, you know, log to log, log n to log log n is maybe you know a factor of four or something, but it's an exponential improvement. Uh, uh, so but the thing is, the first step, I already spent log n parallel time. So, you know, log n plus log log n is still log n. So I'm, I didn't really gain anything, and I ended up doing a little bit more work. So, so that's why you don't want to do that. But it's, it's interesting to think. So, so when you see, so how you can design these things is you can design different, uh, you know, different ways of doing the algorithm, and then you need to combine them in an interesting way. And you need to try and mix them and match it, right? And so one possible way is to break it up into these chunks and run, run by running this algorithm first, and then use algorithm one again on each chunk. And you would, you would actually do pretty good. You're only doing an extra log log in work. But if you use the stupider algorithm within the chunk, you can actually get down to log n work, and you can only you can get down to O of n. You know the sequential algorithm was exponentially slower, but it didn't matter because it was only log n on the scaling band. Um, yeah. So this, this, so this, this, this sounds like one of the operational research principles that in order for a whole system to run efficiently, some parts are going to have to run incredibly inefficiently. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm not an uh, expert in operational research, but I, I suppose that could be true. Um, so, uh, so, so I, I think the, the, the notion of kind of designing different ways of doing something and they're, 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 where they have different trade-offs between them is, is not just useful on parallel algorithms. Um, I, I was actually talking to Robert's brother yesterday, and, and if you're just doing, doing uh, sorting um, sequentially, actually, it's useful to use different sorting algorithms for different scales of your data, right? So if, if you're doing if, if you're doing merge sort, and you get down to a um, or or, or um, when you you can, instead of uh, using the merge sort from items of size one, it's better to run something like a quick sort on on small enough chunks instead of um, building all the way. 
So, and, and th th this is true in, in, in many data structure problems so, um, as well. So, um, okay, so um, next, next week, uh, or yeah, the next week is fall break. Uh, the week after that, we're going to do one more lecture on parallel algorithms for, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a different rank type of problem where we're going to give us a, um, we're going to be given a, it's kind of like searching, given a sorted array, find the location of an element in, the, in that array, and also finding, right, I guess an unsorted array, um, and we'll also find the maximum element, and then surprisingly the maximum. And they'll be able to kind of combine things together, but in a more complicated way. So I didn't explain this, but it's it, it's uh, it's in the I linked to some lecture notes um, that that aren't mine that that explain explain that. And it, it would. The, the notation is slightly different, so it would probably take me too long if you're out of line. But you can do that. If you read through it, it's not too tricky, but you'll need to stare at it. For a time. So.